is a bit of a recurring joke on this channel that Class, in my opinion, is the series that should have lasted for 60-ish years and Doctor Who was the failed spin-off that only got 8 episodes on BBC3 a few years ago. You may remember I did a video, a feature-length hour and a half breakdown of the one and only season of Class, uh, and I actually think it is a misunderstood spin-off. I think you should check out my Class video uh, from last year. Personally, I'm very, very proud and very, very happy with how it turned out. But the Class story has been continuing with big finish they've had four volumes over the past couple of years they had the license a while ago to do four uh, box sets uh, which had to take place within series one they weren't allowed to tread on the ground that the cliffhanger ending of series one of class established so the series has not had any sort of continuation for several years in any form whether it be the big finish audios or a couple of the class novels that came out from bbc books but we do now find ourselves with class secret diary of a rhodian prince which is a one hour audio big finish drama written by the show's composer blair mowat and starring greg austin and jordan renzo who are playing Playing the roles of Charlie and Matthias respectively for this uh, for this brand new uh, story in the class saga. So class secret diary of a Rhodian prince primarily follows the events of series one of class from Charlie's perspective as he's writing a diary. We get to know what he was up to before the events of the first episode. It basically immediately picks up with him being rescued by the doctor which we saw in the flashback from the first episode of class along with his teacher Miss Quill who was also his protector who's got an arm in her head. Basically if none of this makes sense you need to be watching class in order to figure everything out this is not a box set for the uninitiated if you don't know what class is about or what happens in the series you're going to be quite lost because this follows series one of class but sort of like the in-between bits like how did charlie meet Mateus? what happened after the events of bravish heart from charlie and Mateus's perspective etc etc uh, and like i said this is written from blair mowat because he was somebody who was involved as the composer for class but he is somebody who has been very passionate about continuing the story with big finish so we've got this one hour special which primarily uses the framing device of this diary that charlie is keeping because he needs to try and figure out everything that's happened in his head he's had a very complicated first few days living uh, in um, living on earth despite being royalty on the planet of Rhodia uh, only a couple of days ago so let's play a quick clip from the secret diary of a Rhodian prince education on earth is very different from Rhodia there are a lot of people in each class and no one pays attention everyone is constantly trying to play pranks on each other even on the teacher one of the kids, Ram, had this fart machine that he hid behind the teacher's chair. Every time he pressed the remote, it sounded like Mr. Simpson excreted gas. This was a huge source of amusement for the entire classroom. The problem is, I didn't realise it was a prank, and just thought everyone in this culture finds farting hilarious, so I... Well, I... I farted, too. Which did make everyone laugh, but then people made fun of me. On Rodia, I was always, Your Highness. But on my first day of school here, I was... Fart boy. A lot of human humour seems to involve passing wind or going to the toilet. By the time Mr Simpson found the device, the lesson was over, and I'm not sure anyone learnt anything. <clears throat> but anyway, the objective of these teenage school children seems to be to do whatever they can to minimise their learning, despite the fact the rest of their lives seems to be determined by tests on how well they have learnt each topic. It's a fight of the intellect where everyone pretends not to care about the outcome, but secretly, everyone is competing with each other all over the country. Dear reader, it is utterly bizarre. It does primarily use that diary first-person perspective framing device, but there are a few full cast audio drama scenes between Greg Austin and Jordan Renzo where they establish the relationship forming between Charlie and Mateus, which we saw blossom and come into some strife towards the end of the only season of Class. So this is a box set where it's quite hard for me to recommend because if you like, if you don't know anything about Class, if you've not watched the season, you will be completely lost. So if you watched Class but didn't like it, you need to watch Class again and again and again until you are made to like it because Class is the best thing ever. And if you do like Class 
I really do recommend A Secret Diary of a Rhodian Prince. There's a few gaps which I think don't quite add up in terms of the chronology of the series, like it's established in this story that Charlie and Matthias were not only friends but were actually dating before the events of the first episode of Class, which I don't think quite adds up in terms of the complex class timeline, but that's a nitpick as far as I'm concerned. Um, there's a few bits where um, I don't think it quite works, where after the events of Bravish Heart, where Charlie op um, where Charlie considers opening up the Cabinet of Souls for the first time and him and, 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 him and Mateus come to blows. I think that segment in this audio drama was a bit redundant from what we already saw happen on screen, but everything else I thought was really, really interesting. I really like that um, we are seeing this from Charlie's perspective and he's basically grieving his race and everything that he has to try and externalize his thought process through this uh, diary framing device. I thought that was a really great way to, to get inside of Charlie's mind and to fill in and to sort of add extra layers and authority to the character that we didn't quite get as much of as I think we should have in the class series. I do think the romance between Charlie and Mateus is wonderfully done, but like I said, it's just the timing, the fact that according to this, this happened like before class even started, I think was a little bit, um, I don't think that quite adds up and I did find it quite distracting. What is really interesting about class secret diary of a Rhodian prince though, and I cannot properly spoil it, of course, I don't want to ruin the experience of listening to this, but let's just say that it goes further in the class story than we've actually seen before, and that was genuinely very, very exciting, and there was a casting decision in this box set that they've kept hidden, and I won't dare spoil it here, and I hope no one spoils it in the chat as well, but a casting decision towards the end of the box set that genuinely made me so hyped and excited. So, Secret Diary of a Rhodian Prince is sort of already preaching to the converted. If you don't like class, if you don't know anything about class, I can't recommend Secret Diary of a Rhodian Prince. But if you do like the spin off, if you do like these characters and you want to see more adventures with them, or at the very least see the first series of class from a different, more intimate perspective, then I do genuinely really recommend Secret Diary of a Rhodian Prince. There's some great uh, behind the scenes interviews uh, towards the end of the um, of the release as well, like 15 minutes of interviews with the cast and the creative team. I think that those are almost worth the price of admission alone. But this is a genuinely just good coming of age drama where Charlie is trying to recalibrate himself on this new world where he's being guarded by somebody who he, he perceives as being part of a terrorist organization that tried to kill his own people. And then uh, the incoming invasion of the Shadowkin and how he sort of views people like Tan Tanya and Ram and April from uh, from his more intimate perspective where he's able to write in a diary and confide in his, in his thoughts a bit more. We learn a bit more about Rodian society, about um, who him and Miss Quill were before the events of the series, which as a class fan I found really, really rewarding. And it's just so cool that class is, what, seven years old this year and we're getting more expanded material from that series, which I think has a lot left to give. And I think that Blair Mowat, as the writer of this set, understands that as well. That this is a series that unfortunately did end before its time. Class does end on a very big cliffhanger, multiple cliffhangers in fact, and Secret Diary of a Rhodian Prince is a mild course correction to maybe try and alleviate that issue with the franchise. I hope they do more. It, they don't necessarily have to be done within the framing device of a diary that Charlie keeps off from the first person perspective. But I did really like the use of that framing device to re-establish the characters and sort of like soft relaunch them, soft introduce them to audiences who have been wanting some payoff and some resolution for the past seven years. I think Greg Austin and Jordan Renzo do a terrific job at re-establishing themselves as these characters. It sounds like Greg Austin never left the role. I think Jordan Renzo is great as well. The relationship between Charlie and Mateus is very gay and very sweet and very lovely to watch unfold. Like I said, the only issue is the slight timeline issue, but honestly, I think I'm the only person who really cares about that. But yeah, as someone who is a class stan, I appreciated this release and I'm glad that it lived up to its potential. It's not a massive game-changing thing unless you're a class fan, but if you are a class fan, it's a really rewarding listen. The interviews as well, maybe establishing a potential future of the set is great 
and I hope that we do get more news about the return of Class of Big Finish sooner rather than later, because I do think that there is material to be gleaned from these characters, there are still stories left to be told, and there is a continuation that fans do want to see unfold, myself included. It was funny, it was quite heartwarming at points, especially, of course, the relationship between Charlie and Mateus, because when you're a Rodian, they, they, they establish that uh, being in love with somebody is different on Rodia than it is on Earth. On What's the phrase he uses? He says that on Rodia, you don't say you love somebody, you say that you wish for somebody. And Charlie wishes for Mateus. And stuff like that was really, really lovely to listen to.